This tutorial is how to balance chemical equations. This is a really important skill that you're going to need right from the start of your GCSEs, right the way up to the end, and is always worth valuable marks on your exam. So it's really important that we need to be able to do it. Now before we start, there are some things we need to know. If we have an element in the periodic table in a chemical formula, for example, if we have a H for hydrogen, if there is no number in the bottom right hand corner of it, that means that we only have one of that atom. So it's an imaginary one, we don't write it when there's only one atom. If there is a number there, for example two, that means we have two atoms of hydrogen. So we have two individual atoms that are bonded together. If we have a number in front of our formula, so for example a large number, then that means we have two of everything in that formula. So for example, this means we have two molecules of hydrogen. So each molecule has two, so we multiply these two numbers together. So we have our first two hydrogens, and then because we've got the two, we have another pair. So in total, we have four hydrogens. Let's just look at one more example of that. If we have magnesium chloride, which has a 2 in the bottom corner, if we break this ionic compound apart, we have one atom of magnesium and we have two atoms of chlorine. Because there is no number here, okay, which means we have the imaginary one, and there is a 2 there, which means two atoms of chlorine. If we were to change this and then say in our equation we had a 2 here, that means we would have 2 of everything. So that means we would have an extra magnesium and 2 extra chlorines. If we had 3 at the front, we would have an extra set again. Now let's look at how to balance the equation. So we want to use the same process all the time, so it makes it really nice and simple for us. Now some people who are really, really good at balancing equations, can just look at it okay, and work out okay, what do I need to balance. But if we can't do that, we need a method of doing it, and this will always allow us to check. So, first thing we need to do is we need to split the equation into half. So in order to balance an equation, what goes in must come out. So I need the same number of atoms of each element on this side of the equation as I do here. So the first thing I do is write down each of the elements that I have. So here we have a 2 next to the hydrogen, so that means I have two hydrogen atoms. I have a 2 next to the oxygen, so that means I have two oxygen atoms. On this side of the equation, I have a 2 here, but this is only for the hydrogen, so that means I have two hydrogen atoms. And then there is no number next to the oxygen, so that means we only have one. So we've got that. So that's the first step, right now what we've got. At that point, then we need to cross off and try and balance each side of the equation. So I can start with a hydrogen, so I can cross one off on both sides and do the same. And now I can cross off my one oxygen until I get to this point. Now we can see that I've got one oxygen extra on this side of the equation I haven't got here. Now it's important to remember I can't change the equation. That is fixed, I can't change that. But what I can do is I can have an extra molecule. So I can't take anything away, I can't just make this oxygen disappear, but I can add to it. So the only way to do that is, I've already got an extra oxygen on this side of the equation, I can't get rid of that, so I have to get an extra oxygen over here. Now there's only one molecule, which makes this nice and simple, and the molecule has got oxygen in it, so all I do is double that molecule. That means I then have to write out again the molecule, because I've got an extra set, and now I can cross them off. So now I can cross off my oxygen. But I've made myself one more problem. So now what I need to do is I've got two extra hydrogens here that I can't get rid of. So I have to get to find some more on this side. Now I have two molecules and only one contains hydrogen. So I need an additional hydrogen molecule which will give me my extra two H's. And now I can cross them off. And once I've crossed off everything on both sides of the equations, now I have a completely balanced chemical equation. So for water, the chemical, balanced chemical equation is 2H2O plus O2 plus 2H2O. So for every 
two molecules of hydrogen that react with one molecule of oxygen, I get two water molecules that come out. Let's have a look at why it's important to balance a chemical equation. If we take at the example we've just looked at, we can see that we've got a hydrogen molecule represented by the two white atoms, plus an oxygen molecule, O2, goes to water, okay, H2O, so two hydrogens and one oxygen atom. And then if we show underneath, we break these molecules apart, we see here we have two hydrogens on this side of the equation, two oxygens, however on this side of the equation we only have two hydrogens, which is the same, but we only have one oxygen atom. So it's this oxygen atom that we are missing on this side of the equation that we knew we needed to correct. So what we needed to do is to find an extra oxygen atom. So we needed to add an extra water molecule. Once we've done that, now we have our extra oxygen atom, which we can show at the bottom. But we also, in addition to that, have two new hydrogen atoms. We've now, so we've now solved the number of oxygens on this side of the equation. However, we've now created ourselves another problem, that we have two extra hydrogen molecules that we don't have on this side. So in order to fix that, we add an extra hydrogen molecule, and therefore we have our additional two hydrogen atoms. Now if you look at both sides of the equation, we have four hydrogen atoms, and four here, and two oxygen atoms on both sides. So our equation is now balanced. We have the same number of atoms on the left as we have on the right. Okay, let's look at a slightly harder example. So this time we have sodium metal plus oxygen goes to sodium oxide. So we split the equation in half and draw a line underneath. There's no number here, so that means we have one atom of sodium and we have two atoms of oxygen. On this side of the equation, we have a two next to the sodium, so I have two sodium atoms, and I have no number next to the oxygen, so that means I have one. Now I can cross them off. So we have one sodium here, which can be crossed off there, and an oxygen, which can be crossed off. Now this time we have two problems. We are missing a sodium atom over here, and we're missing an oxygen atom over here. So first let's look at the oxygen. The only place that oxygen is found on this side of the equation is in the one molecule we have, which is sodium oxide. So I need to double that. Once I've doubled it, I need to write it out again. So I have an extra two sodium atoms, and I have my extra oxygen atom. Now I can cross off my oxygen, and I'm left with, left with only my sodium atoms. Now I have three on this side of the equation that I still need to find on this side. Now because sodium exists in single atoms, what we can do is put a 4 in front of that and then write out our extra 3 sodiums and then cross them off and then we know we've got a balanced equation because everything is crossed. And if you're unsure you could always look back and check it again. Now let's look at one specific example from C1, which is when we talk about combustion reactions. So in this reaction, we have methane reacting with oxygen, which is combustion, it's reacting with oxygen, it's burning, and we get two products, carbon dioxide and water out. So we split the equation into half, just as before, and put a line, and we need to work out what atoms we have. So there's no number next to the carbon, so we have one carbon atom, we then have a 4 next to the hydrogen, so we have 4 hydrogen molecules. We then have a 2 next to the oxygen, so we have 2 of those. 1 carbon, 2 oxygens, 2 hydrogens, and 1 more oxygen. Then we do our final next stage, which is to cross off on each side. So I can cross off my carbon. I can cross off 1 hydrogen and 2 hydrogens. I've got two left over. I can then cross off one oxygen, one oxygen, but I've still got one left over. First I'm going to try and deal with the hydrogen atoms. Okay? So 
So we have two additional hydrogen molecules on this side and we need to find some here. Now the only molecule that contains hydrogen is water. So I'm going to double the amount of water that I've got. I then draw out the molecule again. So I have two extra hydrogens and one extra oxygen. And now I can cross off my two hydrogen molecules. I've still got one problem, which is that I still have two additional oxygen molecules on the right hand side of the equation. So on this side, I look for where I've got oxygen. The only place I have it is in my oxygen molecules, and I only need two more. So I put a two in front of that, which gives me my one, two additional oxygens, and then I can cross them off. And because now everything is crossed off, I know I've balanced that equation for combustion. Balancing equations can at first seem difficult. Take your time, learn the rules and break it down. The answer is not always going to be obvious. Sometimes you'll need to play around with the numbers and just keep going until it fits. If you end up with numbers that are really big, for example, if this would said 2, 4, 2 and 4 at the end, you would just divide it down so that you have the lowest common multiple. So you want it in the smallest numbers possible, not really big ones. If we now look at the example of our combustion reaction, we have methane over here, which is a carbon surrounded by four hydrogens. We have an oxygen atom, carbon dioxide, and another water molecule. If we look at the numbers of atoms on each side and count, we have one carbon on both sides, we have four hydrogens here, but only two there. This means we need an extra water molecule. So we've now created our extra hydrogens. We now have four oxygen atoms on this side of the equation now. So in order to balance it here, we need an extra oxygen atom. Now if you count each of the molecules, you'll see that the same number of atoms on both sides.